So I don't know how you guys were able to vote. Like it must have been really tough to pick a song. I'm saying I, I don't wanna come down from your We'll get lost together. Let me fight. Hey everyone, it's Brie Seasony here and welcome to the Brie Seasony Awards. First of all guys, I am so sorry for the wait. Unfortunately, I think I misjudged how long the editing for this video would take since I was kind of overzealous and made over 40 categories and this video is like 50 minutes long, but hey, we moved the videos up and I really hope you guys all enjoy it. Thank you so much for being patient, especially to those of you who have helped me with the nominations and final voting process. I'm so happy that the video is finally done and you guys can all see the results. So for those of you who don't know, this video is like my own version of a K-pop award show. So think Mama, Melon Music Awards, etc. I actually did a very similar video to this one last year, but just to explain the process, to make this video possible, I had two rounds of voting. For the first round, I allowed my subscribers to vote on nominees for each category. In the second round and final round, I tallied up the top five or top six if there was a tie, nominees submitted by my subscribers for each category and then I allowed my subscribers to vote to determine the winners. For these categories I included the typical categories that you'd see in MAMA such as best rookie, best girl group, best boy group etc but I also added in my own categories that either I created or took some inspiration and suggestions from my server members. For the special 2022 category I applied a time frame for song and artist submission and the time frame was between November 1st 2021 to November 1st 2022. So basically only songs that were released or artists that were active during this time frame could be submitted as a nominee. The GOAT category is pretty self-explanatory, but everyone here is, quote, the greatest of all time, so the time frame does not apply in this category. It's kind of like a battle of the best of the best or the greats of the industry. And then of course, as mentioned before, for the last category, I just had you all nominate and vote on your typical mama categories. I'll be reviewing the results in this video as well as just giving you my real time opinion on the nominees and whether or not I agree with your final selection. So make sure you stay tuned until after I list all the results to get my commentary at the end of the video. So before we dive into the results, I first wanna give a quick disclaimer especially because of some of the comments I received last year on my video. Award show season should not be taken too seriously and the same goes for this video. The purpose of the video is to have fun and have my community get to take part and select their own winners based on who they think should win. So before you leave a comment like, why wasn't X nominated or why didn't X win? Please just take a moment to think. If someone wasn't nominated or didn't win in this video, it's because they didn't get enough votes and it's not the end of the world. So have fun with the video and of course, feel free to share your thoughts on how my community voted. But as always, just make sure to keep it respectful in the comments. And lastly, I wanna thank my amazing channel members, Kia Toxki, BB Fawn, Angel, Mini Princess, Alice Loves Cherry, Vermilion, King Leonidas, Kaylin Caster, Night Skinny Hongjin, and Misa. Thank you so much for the support, you guys, and I hope that you really enjoy this video. All right, so let's get right into the results, starting with the special 2022 categories.
delicious. I'm pretty psycho.
Let me love you. I was really excited to see how you all would vote on the categories that I created and y'all did not disappoint. First of all, I definitely agree with your selection of Only One Of for Nugu Excellence. Only One Of is a group that I added to my stand list last year and they've quickly become one of my favorite fourth gen groups. They have a discography that's flawless in my opinion and I especially loved their series of solo songs that they released this year. With Begin by Yoo Jung probably being my favorite and Be Mine by Junji being my next favorite. Another Nuka group that didn't make the nominations that I think is excellent is Elast. Thanks to some of my server members, I've been getting into them as well, and we need to get Elast out of Nugu Dumb along with only one of. So, the best B-side for male group was an extremely tough category. Three of the nominees here, Opening Sequence, Time Lapse, and Cyberpunk, were like neck and neck. The votes were so close, and I totally understand why, because all three of these B-sides are hands down some of my favorite B-sides from this year. Personally, my favorite out of the three is Time Lapse. Can We Fix It still has end citizens in a chokehold, including me. Can we fix it? Baby, can we fix it? Fix it? And cyberpunk is, well... But opening sequence is so iconic as well. Thursday's Child in general was an amazing album. So I definitely see why you guys voted the way you did. But another B-side that wasn't nominated that I would recommend is Survive the Night by The Boys from their seventh mini album, Beware. It's one of my favorite songs from that album. It's such a chill, vibey song. It's a great song to put on at night or in the evening or like during a long, chill drive. The vocals are amazing and it's just one of my favorite songs by The Boys. So if you're not into The Boys, definitely check them out. I was also really happy to see Illusion get so much love for Best B-side, although it's technically a pre-release single. Since it's not a title track, I figured it would be okay to be nominated as a B-side since you guys voted for it. It's definitely one of my favorite Espa songs and I was really happy to see Espa perform it live at Camp LA. It also seems like you guys loved Solgi's solo debut since you voted Los Angeles as the best female soloist B-side and 28 Reasons as the best music video. As someone who's really into SM Artist and was highly anticipating Solgi's solo debut mini album, I agree. Both tracks are fire and have been on heavy rotation for me and I just loved the visuals of the 28 Reasons music video and the concept. It was just very enthralling to watch and I think that Sogi definitely fits this type of dark, almost ominous concept. If you know me, you know I'm a diehard Shawol, so it's a given that I agree with Key's Another Life and Gasoline as the best male soloist B-side in music video. Key's vocals in Another Life give me chills, and I love that we got a performance video to go alongside it. The song has these heavy ethereal cyberpunk vibes that I think have become synonymous with Key's sound at this point. I think out of all of Key's solo releases, Gasoline is my favorite album so far. I mean, all of his work is stellar in my opinion, but something about Gasoline era from the music, rollout concept, and even the really cool VHS-like album packaging just hits differently for me. I consider Gasoline to be one of my favorite music videos ever in K-pop, especially if we're just talking about this year. I love the Greek deity visuals, perhaps based on the Greek and Roman god Apollo that Key led with in the video as well. It's a really stunning, powerful concept, and with the triumphant lyrics of Gasoline, I think this god-like concept works very well. And Key definitely has the personality to pull it off. So Best Bridge was another tough one. I was a bit Torn. Although Two Baddies is probably one of my least favorite title tracks from NCT 127, I love the bridge, but I agree with your pick of Gorilla for best bridge hands down. ATs really outdid themselves with this one with the new metal vibes of the song, and they had ATNE all around the world headbanging and screaming, Break the walls! And we love them for that, right? Shout out to NMix's Tank, which actually came in second place here. I think Tank is one of NMix's best songs, and I really love the change of pace that we get in the bridge when compared to the rest of the song 
song, as well as Lily's vocals. Best dance cover was another category with cutthroat competition. La Seraphim took first place with Itzy's Yeji and Ryujin super close behind. All of the nominees are fantastic in this category, so great job, but I must say, out of these five, Nikki and Jungwon from Enhypen really stood apart to me in my personal opinion. Their Bleeding Darkness performance is easily one of my favorite Studio Choom dance videos ever, and I was wowed by all of the clever pieces and parts of the choreo and how expertly the boys pulled off such a mature, dark concept. So I also want to briefly talk about the Best Vocal Cover category. So you guys already know I'm a huge end citizen, and I, of course, really enjoyed Jay Yun's cover of Can't Take My Eyes Off You by Frankie Valli, which you guys selected as the winner. But if we're talking about these nominations personally, Extraordinary Heroes cover of Drown by Bring Me the Horizon was my favorite. I'm actually like really wanting to get into Extraordinary Heroes, but I don't really know where to start. But one day I was talking to my server members in my Discord server, and somewhere in the server someone ended up sharing this cover. And I was like, wow, Extraordinary Heroes covered Bring Me the Horizon because when I was younger, probably like high school or middle school age I really liked their music and I love the song Drown so I was really excited to see that not only did they cover the song but they did an excellent job so yeah if you guys have any song recommendations for Extraordinary Heroes please let me know in the comments because I'm very impressed by them so far from what I've seen so, do you agree or disagree with any of the nominations or winners here? Let me know your thoughts on the results in the comments. So, that's about all I have for the special categories, so now, let's move on to my favorite section of the preseason e Awards, the GOAT or Greatest of All Time categories. Two, one, go!
사랑이란 그래 sweet and bitter 널 망치고 구원해 I'll make your dreams come true 정말 고생했어요 
So this goat category section of the video is probably my favorite part when it comes to all of the sections. I figured that it would be nice to make a best of the best in K-pop section instead of only acknowledging the releases from the past year. So anyways, let's talk about the results. But since this video is already pretty long, I'm only going to touch on some of the categories here, mainly the ones that stuck out the most to me personally. So I don't have much to say about the male idol of idols category, but you guys definitely did what you needed to do here. The term idol of idols was created because of Taemin, so I think that kind of speaks for itself. I also agree with your selection of Boa for the female idol of idols as well. I mean, Boa is an icon and pretty much the blueprint when it comes to K-pop. She's an amazing artist with an amazing discography, and she also has tons of accolades under her belt. For example, she was the first Korean artist to have an album debut was number one in the charts in Japan, and and she pretty much opened the door for other K-pop artists and companies to promote in Japan as well. So yes, BOA paved the way and I agree with how you voted here as well. The best dance categories were also super tricky. For the males, there was a tie, so I had you all vote on six nominees instead of five. And you guys did pick a lot of my favorite K-pop dancers in the industry, which was really cool. Funnily enough though, you guys chose Taemin as number one and Ten as number two, which I'm not mad at. You guys know already how I feel about Taemin's dancing, as well as how I feel about Shiny in general. Taemin is definitely the GOAT, but I feel that people don't give Ten enough credit. I do consider him to be the best dancer in NCT, and I see a lot of people echo that that thought as well. But I also think that Ten is one of the best dancers in the K-pop industry. I actually saw a clip where Boa was speaking and then the clip she name dropped Taemin as a junior in the industry that she thinks dances very well. And she also mentioned that Taemin has named Ten as a junior that he thinks dances very well. So I think the proof is all there. I think that that really speaks volumes for Ten's ability as a dancer. And for the female best dancer category, we had a lot of steep competition here. Personally though, I would have picked Boa. Whenever I see best female dancer, my mind automatically goes to Boa because she's a legend. But I get why you guys picked Momo. Momo was an amazing dancer as well. She's actually my bias in twice. So although I do disagree in this particular category, I see what you guys are doing here. I also want to talk about the best rapper female section because this is a category that made me do a double take. Now you guys chose Soyeon as the best 
female rapper of all time in K-pop, she got over 40% of the votes. That surprised me because although I think Soyeon isn't a bad rapper, CL was a nominee in this category. The legend, the CL from 21. I was a little shocked that you guys picked Soyeon over CL. Now, like I said, I don't think Soyeon's a bad rapper. She is very hands-on with songwriting and producing an idol, which I really respect. And I do like some of her raps, but I will say overall her raps are a hit or miss for me personally. And because I consider CL to be commonly known as one of the best K-pop rappers in general, I was a little surprised that you guys picked Soyeon over CL. Maybe not that many of you are into second gen K-pop and maybe didn't witness 21, or maybe you don't know many of their songs. But if you don't, I definitely would tell you to check out not only 21, but also CL's solo music because CL is the best female rapper in K-pop. You can at me in the comments if you want. It's true. It's true. I also want to briefly talk about the best vocalist categories because this section of the video was probably one of the sections that I had the most fun editing because you guys picked some of my favorite vocalists in the industry. First of all, for the guys, why did you guys torture yourselves like this? Why did you guys pick all of these amazing nominees? Like, I don't know how you guys were able to vote because even I was a little bit torn. So you guys did select Baekhyun as the best male vocalist in K-pop. I'm a huge fan of Baekhyun. I love his solo music. I think he's an incredible vocalist, but hands down, I would have gone with who you guys chose as second place, Junghyun from Shiny as first place. Jonghyun is one of my favorite artists and vocalists, not even just in K-pop, but just in music in general. I think he is the GOAT. I think he's amazing. I think he sings with so much emotion and just, just rawness, and his talent and technique is undefeated in my opinion. I also want to point out he was one of Baekhyun's vocal trainers, but even though I definitely would have chose Jonghyun hands down, I can see why you guys voted Baekhyun. He's an amazing artist as well, and I really do think his voice is great. SM in general just have great vocalists. I love that you guys nominated Jungho as well. He's probably to me one of the best, if not the best vocalists in fourth gen. He's so talented, and of course being an end citizen, you know I'm a fan of Tail, and I also love Chen's voice as well. His recent mini album is incredible incredible. And even for best female vocalist, once again, you guys chose some of my favorite vocalists. I love Taeyeon, so I think for me, if I would have voted, it would have been between Taeyeon and Wendy. Taeyeon actually came in first place with Wendy coming in a close second. I have to admit, I was surprised that you guys nominated Lily just because she just debuted this year. And personally, even though I know she's a great singer, I haven't heard enough from her to say that she's one of the best in K-pop. I think it's a little early to say that, but I do think she's talented. As far as vocalists that you guys didn't mention that I would nominate, I would definitely throw in Ki Hyun from Monster X, maybe Hwasa from Mamamoo. Just off the top of my head, those are two vocalists that I really, really enjoy. I also really love Sungwoo from Victon. I think he's a great vocalist as well, but definitely love how you guys voted in these sections. I also want to talk about best K-pop bridge of all time. You guys did what you needed to do. Tempo by EXO is the best bridge in K-pop. Specifically, I want to mention I'm not even a Orbit, but the bridge and so what has me levitating every time and I also love the bridge in Simon Says. And now finally I want to talk about the best k-pop dance break of all time. One by BTS secured this win and they deserve it. I consider One to be not only one of BTS's best dance breaks but also one of the best dance breaks in k-pop. It was just so incredible. I just love the entire choreography for On. I love how they have the drummers and all the backup dancers. It's just definitely an experience. I also love Secret Story of the Swan which came in second place by the way. Secret Story of the Swan dance break is legendary. I think that all of us will admit that. Cheon was amazing with her little solo dance and the rest of the girls slayed as well. And also the way the dance break was portrayed in the music video. The entire music video is just beautiful, but something about that moment in the music video was just even more stunning and cinematic. So I think you guys once again did a great job in this category. If there are any categories that you agreed or disagreed with the winner or just wanted to give your thoughts on, make sure to leave a comment in the comment section because I do read comments and I might reply to a few of you and I'd just love to hear what you think. Now without further ado, let's move on to the mama categories.
Cause I don't ever do this When my eyes on you So I kill the time join you All oh, you know Like a nice year I'm going to take a look at you I'm going to take a look at you I'm going to take a look at you Get that, I like that Like that Before I get into this final section of the video, I really want to give a shout out to Be Sweet LA. They have a really cute Etsy store where they sell adorable stickers and stationery, some of which are K-pop related. For example, if you're a carrot, they have a really cool holographic Be The Sun sticker that you might be interested in. Are you a once? Well, Be Sweet LA has you covered. Check out their Twice The Feel sticker. It's really cute. Be Sweet LA was actually nice enough to send me a few of their stickers to check out, and I actually laughed when I saw this one that they sent me. It says, I serve 
survive to Camp LA. And if you've seen my video about my experience at Camp LA or heard about it or even attended it yourself, I'm sure you'd love this sticker too. The No Visas by Monster X featuring Kai cracked me up and it even looks like a little mixtape. Yeah, I love this sticker. It's definitely going on my laptop. But if you're in need of some cool stickers for your laptop too, or just general deco, check out Be Sweet LA. I'll leave the link in the pinned comment and you can use the discount code SWEET10 for 10% off. Thank you so much to Be Sweet LA. I definitely encourage you to check them out. So honestly, for this mama section, y'all did better than mama, like mama could never. First of all, thanks so much for voting for ATs for best dance performance male group. I was a little bummed when I saw that they didn't get any nominations this year because you guys know I'm a huge AT and E if you're not new to this channel. Personally, when I think of performance kings, ATs is definitely one of the first groups that come to mind. And Gorilla is actually one of my favorite ATs eras because I think it really showcased that part of ATs. Their live stages for Gorilla and even the music video where you can see a lot of the choreography really showed that really showed that they mean business when it comes to choreo and dancing and performing. And I was really surprised when ATs got no nominations for the performance categories in Mama for this specific reason. I was a little sad that Gorilla didn't get any real Mama nominations, but you guys saved the day. I also want to briefly talk about the Rookie of the Year categories. Extraordinary Heroes took first place for the guys. I totally agree with you guys. They have really blown up. Their fandom is really growing. But believe it or not, I wasn't really crazy about Happy Death Day, but I do really like Strawberry Cake and Haircut. But I want to take this moment to tell you to please stand T-A-N. I actually had no clue who they were until a few people people in my server told me about them. They were also nominated in the Rookie of the Year category here and their music is so good. I love their song, Walking on the Moon. They're super talented and we need to get them out of Nugudum. So if you haven't checked out their music, definitely do because I'm a big fan of them. For the girls, this category was really tough. I've, Le Seraphim, and New Jeans have all been killing it this year, especially New Jeans. I feel like New Jeans really just blew up from the gate. Like with their debut, everybody was talking about them. So I think any of those three specifically, I've, Seraphim or New Jeans are definitely Rookie of the Year material because they all just totally took over this year. This was definitely the year for girl groups. I also strongly agree with your choice for best hip hop slash urban music category. I've really been getting into B.I. lately. I love his music. Bitul Bitul is such a banger and it's definitely been on repeat for me this year. It's probably one of my most played songs from this year actually. And I also really like Keep Me Up. Like this man cannot make a bad song and I think he deserves way more popularity than he currently has. And for best collaboration, I knew hands down that you guys would vote that that by Psy and Suga because that song is amazing. I just loved their chemistry together and it's a great song. I think it's hands down the best collab that we've had this year. But I was also surprised by Shut Down by Moonbyul and Sori because I had never heard the song before. But I love it. I'm glad you guys put me on by nominating this song because their vocals are great and they just sound great together. And the music video was so cute. They had great chemistry. So yeah, I'm definitely adding Shut Down to my Spotify library. And for best dance performance solo, you guys voted Birthday by 10. And I agree, although the competition was really tough for this category, Birthday by 10 is amazing. Amazing. The music video had me in awe the first time I watched it. Even after I watched it again, I was still in awe by Tense Dancing. He is just an amazing performer. He's entrancing to watch and he's definitely one of the best dancers in the industry to me. I wish he would have gotten the chance to actually promote the song because it was so good and I would love to see him perform it on different stages, different music shows. When are we gonna get a full 10 album? He's such a well-rounded member of NCT where I think he definitely has the potential for a solo career. So if that's something that he's interested in, I would love to see more from him. So for the artist of the year category, guys, it was super close. Just so you guys know, even though I've took the win, I've had 25% of the votes and Stray Kids had 24.3% and Seventeen had 24.5% of the votes. So you can see that these three were neck and neck. Honestly, I think all all of them are great choices, but if you ask me, women really did the damn thing this year in K-pop. And I think I've really um, carved out a name for themselves with their debut, with Love Dive, with After Like. They've just been releasing banger after banger. And I think that Love Dive is definitely very commonly loved in the K-pop community. And I'm really looking forward to eventually hearing a full length album from I've. So far we've gotten like EPs. I need a full length album. But Stray Kids were great this year too with Ordinary. I love that album. 
And 17 has definitely made an impact this year as well. So for song of the year, this is another one that was really close. Love Dive ended up winning with 30% of the votes, but Hype Boy had 29.5%. So these two songs were neck and neck, but all of the nominations that you guys had for this category, Hot and Tomboy and Maniac as well, are all great songs. So I don't know how you guys were able to vote. Like it must've been really tough to pick a song. So for album of the year, you guys selected Fearless by Liz Seraphim. Even though I like all these albums, I specifically love Ordinary, Two Baddies, and Miniso, Two Thursdays Child. These three albums are definitely my favorite out of the five, but hands down, my favorite is Two Baddies. Even though I'm not really a fan of the title track Two Baddies, the B-sides of that album, like Time Lapse, Crash Landing, Vitamin, basically every song won the album has had me in a chokehold. So it's definitely my album of the year, but I respect y'all's choice. Fearless is a great album. There's no wrong answer when it comes to this category. I think all of your nominees are great. All right, so if you've made it this far, if you've made it to the end of this video, thank you so much for watching. I know this video is really long. It's pretty much movie length, but I hope you guys liked it. Like I mentioned before, let me know what you thought of the results for the categories in the comment section. I will be checking because I want to know what you guys think. And lastly, for those of you who have been waiting for this video, thank you so much for your patience. If you haven't already, make sure to check out my Discord server and join. It's a great place for you to engage with other K-pop fans. So it's a lot of fun and I'm also pretty active on Discord. Thank you again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.